how do we make sure we do the right thing, make the right choices, and not worry too much about stuff? Well, one thing that has been very useful to me with regard to that, something that I've been practicing and studying for a long time, is the Buddhist principle of spontaneous right action in the present moment. And that's what this episode is about. And this is an episode of Walking Our Path. And my name is Casper. And this podcast is a podcast where I go out on a walk and I share my best ideas. So I'm walking in nature right now. If you're, well, if you're watching me on YouTube, you can see that. <laughs> and if you are listening to me on a, another platform, then you can probably hear it. Probably hear some birdies and some wind. And the invitation is for you to join me on this walk. So get up, get out your chair, stop scrolling on your phone and just move, be active, fold your laundry, clean your floors, whatever it is, do something, move, be useful while you take in uh, my best insights, stories, ideas that I would love to share with you. Right, so I have been practicing this concept of being in the present for a very long time. It's been in, in, my, in my field of awareness for a very long time. Um, when I was about 15 years old and I was facing some pretty intense mental distress and it was just an anxious wreck, I had panic attacks, I was addicted, all this stuff, I, uh, I found martial arts as, as a way to really uh, help me out of it, which I haven't practiced for a long time, but um, through that I found Buddhist principles. And principles of Buddhism were always kind of like a shining light in my life. And I guess I've been studying it for more than 20 years now, in a way. Not in a very formal way, in the sense that I go to Buddhist monasteries or that I would call myself a Buddhist, but Eastern philosophy has always been very interesting to me. And one of the core principles of this way of thinking is, of course, that in the present moment, in the here and now, or, you know, actually the present moment, the here and now is the only thing that really exists. Time doesn't exist. But still we have this capacity to live somewhere else with our mind. And this can be a superpower, but it can also be a massive downside that causes a lot of suffering. So. For me personally, uh, I'll just share how this, because you know, I'm not going to try to relate all the basic principles of mindfulness and Buddhism, because you probably have heard enough about those. So that, let's make it a little bit more personal, is that um, I've had a lot of mental distress in my life, but I've also had a lot of phases of just really high intensity and being you know, successful according to the, the uh, definitions of the modern world, being highly productive. You know, being on tour, building a business, like all of these things I've been doing, and especially in the last few months, it's been uh, just very intense. Yeah, we moved house, we had a baby, uh, the business is growing, I have non-stop events, teaching, uh, I'm traveling and teaching again, so just a lot going on, right? Um, and family life combined with business life, young children, it's just a lot. And what I found is that, and this is a common thread throughout my life, but I've had some really profound insights about this, is that in many moments when I could be resting, could be sleeping, could be chilling, could be enjoying life. My mind is still going on about, oh, but I should, still should do this thing and I should do that thing. How am I going to do that? Is this going to be okay? So this is ruminating of like, how is life going to go? And effectively, in the, in the present moment, where I could be relaxing and enjoying and all of these things and playing and whatever, I'm using my mind, which, you know, every human mind is a genius because it can do this. I'm using that genius human capacity for problem solving all of these things in a moment when I can't actually do the problem solving, which means I'm not present in the moment. And this is causing me very often to then, when, I, when it is time to approach these problems or to be present with them, um, then I'm tired from thinking about it, you know, or I'm worried from ruminating. And this is, of course, I think probably one of the biggest issues that people deal with. And one of the biggest themes that comes up in all of the teaching that I do about personal development. And in a way, I feel like I've made massive strides forward. But the interesting thing is that with everything, every part of the personal process where you grow in and you develop, you are capable of taking on new challenges, right? So you grow yourself into a level of awareness where you have a higher capacity for engaging with life. And when you have a higher capacity for engaging with life, you do more challenging things, more interesting things, and new, bigger challenges arise and then you have to go back to the, or not necessarily back to the drawing board, but then, you know, you have to grow into the kind of person that can deal with those. And when you do, you get new challenges that met, match the kind of person that you are, you know, uh, and, uh, and new opportunities, of course, also, right? And when I say challenge, I don't mean something negative. I also mean opportunities and fun things. And then, you know, 
you deal with those and you grow and so it's it's kind of like a cycle and i like i like seeing it as this cycle where i'm not looking for a moment where all my problems are resolved i'm forever living in the present moment i'm enlightened and uh you know i can just cruise on from there on i don't i've kind of accepted that that's not how life works and if it does uh maybe i'll figure it out at some point how to do that but for now i'm actually quite enjoying this but i did find myself uh in recent months with the baby and the business and all the things there's so much so many other things going on <laughs> um I found myself ruminating and worrying and I was like, ah, okay, so let me come back to my core essential practice, my core essential principles. How do we stay present? And this is why I want to talk about the idea of spontaneous right action in the present moment. Because the funny thing is there is always something that is the right thing to do in the moment. And the more we think about what is the right thing to do in the moments that might arise, the less present we are and the more planned we are and the more thought through we are and the less spontaneous we are. And that's what I like about this idea of spontaneous action in the present moment, spontaneous right action in the present moment, the spontaneity. And this is also, if you see people who've been really practicing Buddhism, like Buddhist monks or people who are really deep in Zen, but also so, some of the, the people that I've sat with in indigenous ceremonies, for example, people who are really present in the moment, is you see that there's no strong deliberation in their actions. You see that in each moment, it is a spontaneous, creative response to whatever arises in that moment. And this to me has been an understanding or an insight or a portal into being more present the whole time. Because if I can trust that if I am just here and I bring my as much of, of as much awareness and presence as I can to each moment, I will know what is the right thing to do in that moment. And the funny thing is when I'm in my role, when I'm teaching, when I'm speaking, when I'm working, uh, especially when I'm in front of an audience, I can do that really well because I'm an improviser and I don't plan anything. I just start talking and then whatever arises in the moment is welcome and I just respond to it. And this is something uh, that I like to carry over into the rest of my life. So what is spontaneity? What does that mean? It means that there's an idea or a response to life, a creative response to life that arises from being in the present moment, not from thinking how things should be, not from judging how things are. So that means that we have to allow and welcome whatever is present so that we can have a creative response to it. And just to give a very practical example, you can worry about the state of the world. You can worry about the environment, for example, like, oh, the environment and we're destroying the planet. And, and you know, as a matter of fact, like, um, Imagine just walking down the street and be like, oh, the environment, man, the environment is so bad. Am I going to have a planet for my children? What is the right way to solve this? And as you're walking the street, worrying about this, you're passing trash that's on the street and not picking it up. Right? So spontaneous right action in the present moment would be to just be present, to walk the street and to notice like, hey, there's trash here. I can pick this up and I can, I can throw it away. And then again, you can also turn that into a whole story of like, yeah, this is the right way to do things. If I just keep doing this, it's going to be a better planet. All I need to do is make sure that every single time I go on a walk, I pick up all the trash that I see. And if I can inspire others to do that and make it a movement and spread it around the rah, 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 right? And then it becomes this really big thing that you put pressure on yourself and it has to be in a certain way and you try to control everything. Or you could just say, I'm a good person. And I trust that if I am present and I care about my environment, the things that are important to me, the things that are the right action in that moment will spontaneously arise and I will know what to do. And to stand in life with the trust that that spontaneous right action is always right there in the present moment, right? That's where it is. That's where we can access it, where we can connect with it. And especially in relation to the environment or in relation to business, right? I find myself in the evening at night sometimes thinking about, oh, I need to answer this email. I need to say that, and I need to make sure I write this thing well, and I plan this new event. And then it's also clear in my mind, so I'm thinking about it. And then I can't really do anything about it because that's not the right thing to do in that moment. <laughs> the right thing to do in that moment is to rest and to sleep. And then the next morning, when the moment arises, that is the right thing, you know, the right moment to do those things. You now I'm tired and I'm groggy, and then I get even more worried, like, oh, if I can't finish this now, when am I gonna finish it? And how am I gonna do it? And, Yesterday I had these good thoughts, right? And so to be very clear, 
um, I'm not ahead of anyone in this in this process, and I don't think anybody is ahead of anyone. I think everybody is right on schedule. I don't think there is a linear approach to personal development. I don't think there's a ladder. I don't think there's such a thing as like there's a reason that there's no meditation competitions, right? Uh, and some people make a competition out of meditation or about their spiritual path, you know, by getting certain roles or wearing the right robes or malas or like I know more prayers than you do or I'm more present than you or I'm more Zen than you. I'm more evolved than you. Like that's not what it's about. Uh, so just to be clear, I'm just very human uh, going through these same things. But I find that with this process of personal growth and engaging with these ancient scriptures around how to do life, you know, the Vedas, the Buddhist scriptures, uh, and the different religious scriptures for over the world. And there's so many amazing things written that they go like, oh, wow, you know what? People have walked this path before for thousands of years, and they've written about it. And their experience is honestly not that different from mine. I mean, that's probably the reason why you're listening to this podcast or listen to podcasts at all, because you know that other people have similar experiences and they have perspectives that could help. So I laugh at myself nowadays every single time I get caught in one of those loops again and go like, ha, huh, remember when you told those people about spontaneous right action in the present moment? Now it's time for you to do that. And they go like, oh, yeah, true. And I laugh at myself. And that's the funny thing also is that even very heavy, difficult, challenging, scary things can be full of humor if that is the right thing in the present moment, right? If you're fully open and you're allowing and welcoming of whatever is there, then there might be a lot of laughter and humor to be found in these difficult moments because that might be spontaneously the right thing to do. So there's one element that kind of makes it possible to have this perspective, and that is the element of allowing, of welcoming, where many of us walk in life with a dynamic of resistance. So very early on in life, when we're, and I see this in, in my young children, like one is two and a half and the other one is of course four months. So at four months, it's completely open and everything just arises in the moment. And if she's hungry, she cries, you know, and if there's another problem, she cries or there's pain or whatever, and then we figure out what to do. But it's all very much in the present moment. Then if I look at my two and a half year old, Atlas, he is starting to try and manipulate the world. He figured out that some experiences are undesirable and some experiences are desirable. So from the moment he wakes up, he's making sure that he's moving towards the desirable experiences and away from the undesirable one. He wakes up and he goes, oh, I want food. No, I want this food and not that. I want to play with this car and not that one. I don't want to go to daycare. I do want to go to daycare. Like all of these different things. And it's just this pushing and pulling with life, which is great. It's a very important part of our development, of course. We learn our boundaries. We learn our preferences. But then at some point, these boundaries and preferences become a constant pushing and pulling of like, no, I only want the desirable experiences and I do not want the undesirable experiences. And if you look at your life, if you look at the whole web of life that you've created, all the things you do on a day-to-day -day basis, the actions you take, the things you think, the way you respond to people, the people you seek out in your life, if you really sit with that, how much of that is just you working to get to a more desirable place and away from a less desirable place. Isn't that basically what we do all day? <laughs> you know, And that's what I like about Buddhism. And it's also like one of the principles that the Buddha had, but you can find this across uh, religious and spiritual scriptures. If you, if you really look for it, if you have a clear eye, you will find that this is described as the core of suffering about wanting something else than what is now. So how do we move kind of beyond just this transaction of life, this transactional way of looking like I'm going to do this and then life needs to give me that. I'm going to work really hard for that and then people need to give me this approval or I need to, you know, I'm going to make this much money and then I want that amount of love and then I'm going to be okay. So to constantly be motivated from not being in the place where you are, just getting to the next point, where's my approval, where's my love, where's my money, where's my achievement, All right? This is of course a very natural thing but it is the thing that creates most of the suffering. If you ask me, and if you ask the Buddha, and he's probably better authority <laughs> than I am, but that's the essential teachings of many of the great masters that have walked the path. And I mean, we're all just walking our path. That's why I named the podcast this. And everybody 
is exactly, you know, on schedule, I believe, where we need to be. But in order, so like I said, what is the, what is the way to get to spontaneous right action in the present moment? It is allowing. And this is something that I realized in myself, a really funny little ego loop that I had where I like, okay, I want spontaneous right action in the present moment. How do I get there? <laughs> it's just like a phase I went through like, okay, why can't I just be present? I just want to be present. And just wanting to be present became this desiring, you know, for a better place or a different experience in itself. And I was like, oh, but wait, okay. So I'm frustrated because I'm not present. So what is present is frustration, but that's one of the things that I'm trying to not feel. So maybe if I turn the other direction, I turn away from the frustration, uh, I turn instead of turning away from the frustration, I turn towards it. So instead of resisting it, I will just allow the frustration and that be present. And suddenly I was present. So that's the funny thing. Many of us live in resistance, even yearning for something that you're trying to get or that you do want is in a way resistance because it is resisting what is now, because now is not the thing you want. So then you resist the now and you reach for the thing that you think will give you a better now. And if, as long as we keep living for a better now, we'll never be in the now. So we'll never be able to enjoy it, right? If you ever had this where you work for a goal and you work for a goal and it's gonna give me, it's gonna give me the final, this is gonna give me the gratification. And you have it and you have this momentary gratification, but all you've been doing is reaching for it. And all you've been practicing is reaching for it. And you're still in this mindset of reaching. You're just gonna keep reaching. You're like, oh, okay. That wasn't it. I need more gratification. You get another goal and reach another thing. And, and of course, the modern world is very much wired, I would almost say, to keep us in this mindset. Um, social media is really supporting this idea of like, oh, there's always some better place to get. And even the, the self-improvement market, the whole idea of self-improvement in many ways is flawed. I mean, I, on some level, I think self-improvement is a great thing. It's always great to ask yourself questions to be like, hey, how can I live more compassionately, have more love, uh, be more aligned with the things that are my core values, right? Change, accept what you cannot change, change what you can, cannot accept, as the Buddha says, right? So for sure, take action, do things, reach, uh, set goals. But what is the place from which you are doing this? If you are just doing this out of resistance of the present moment, and all you're practicing is resisting the present moment, then how are you ever gonna enjoy the thing that you want it when it arises in the present moment? This is for many people a very challenging thing. So the route to that is allowing. And allowing is basically allowing yourself, welcoming yourself, welcome every single part of yourself. In this moment, can you just sit here and be like, oh, I am welcome. Even the parts of you that you don't normally like to welcome, can you be like, huh, that's also welcome. And this is also welcome. And that's also welcome. And this has been a practice literally that I do, would do in meditation or when difficult things would arise, I'd go like, oh, okay, it's difficult, but it's welcome. Let me welcome it. And that's the cool thing. As soon as you fully welcome something, it means you are present with it. You are now in the present moment. And then you can see that the spontaneous right action is always there for you. And this is at least, it's my experience. It's always been there for me. So even if I've been resisting a fear or a very dark thought or something very scary, and I've been working so hard to not feel this, this heavy feeling or to, to not be in touch with this afraid or vulnerable or hurt part of myself. And I've just been resisting and resisting and then finally, because I was like, but what do I, you know, do you, you think something like, what do I do when it, when it's there, you know, what am I going to do when I feel that horrible feeling or when I, when I am in touch with that part of myself that I've learned not to love? I wouldn't know what to do. Well, you would, if you would be in touch with it, because then you have your spontaneous right action because it's right there in the present moment. So when I learned to really engage with the parts of me that I had a difficult time engaging with, my shadows, my downsides, my dark sides, my fears, heavy emotions, unprocessed grief, when I really welcomed it to the surface, I realized that the right, spontaneous right action was right there. And the spontaneous right action was always to just let it, let it flow through me, to welcome it, to let it come up and just to see how it moves, to study it, to keep welcoming and welcoming. And every single time so far, it would move through and out in a way, not out that it was gone, right? But as it arises, as the experience arises, all I need to do is not resist and allow it and welcome it and be like, huh, 
Now this, this too will pass. Everything is temporary. Let me just sit and observe this temporary experience of me being deathly afraid. Let me observe this temporary experience of pain or fear of loss, of grief. Let me just lovingly observe and welcome my human experience <laughs> instead of trying to always improve my experience. And it's done a lot for me. All right. That was a good ramble, 20 minutes. I think I'll keep it at that because I could literally talk about this for days. I hope you had a nice walk. I hope there was something in here that you enjoyed, that you could do something with. And I hope you have a wonderful day in the present moment. And someday very soon, probably next week, I will spontaneously take right action of turning on my microphone and recording another podcast. And if you have any questions or requests that you'd like me to speak to, then feel free to send me an email, hello at breathworkmasterclass.com. Uh, this is also the website where you can find uh, information about my programs, my teachings, my events. If you are on, out on the walk, it would be so cool if you post a little selfie of where you're walking to your stories and tag me in it. And I can share it with all the other cool people across the globe that are out walking with us. All right, wishing you a wonderful day. And until next time, on Walking Our Path.